now. Okay, are you recording? Okay, great. Okay, take it away. Okay, everybody mute. <laughs> All right, everybody. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. And with the clumping of the the the, the stone of democracy here, um, we are going to start the August meeting of the Benzi Democrats. Thank you to everybody in the room and everybody on Zoom. Uh, I'm Jana Goldman. I'm a co-secretary. And we will start with, do you want the icebreaker question or do you want the pledge? Well, All right, let's start with the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, indivisible, with liberty and justice, and justice for, all. for all, someday. All right. All right, let me turn this over to Jim, our fearless leader. Ah, hello. Good morning. <laughs> Thank you all for being here today on this uh, dog day of, of August here. We're getting into the dog days and everybody's gone away except you. So I'm glad you're here. Thank you. <laughs> Great. Okay. So we're going to get this started with a fun thing like, like we do now. Uh, we're just going to go around the room very quickly and ask uh, also on Zoom, what's your favorite thing about Tim Walls? So go ahead and shout it out. Go ahead. Educators can govern well. Okay. Okay. Great. He's from the Midwest. All right. Yeah. He's a teacher and he's funny. He's a teacher. Right. <laughs> Three tampons. <laughs> Greta. Uh, the, the, his uh, coaching Class A football is a really, really hard job. And coaching a losing team to a championship is proof of the pudding. Okay. Yeah. Great. Cafeteria duty. Shout it out. Cafeteria duty. Okay. <laughs> Keep your damn hands off my body. Okay. Jay? He calls it like it is. He calls oh, it like it is. Yeah. Children with full bellies. Okay. Yeah. Okay, great. What do we got on the Zoom there, Jana? Uh, big smile is one of them. Um, anybody else? Anybody else on the Zoom just want to stick their comments in the chat? Or, or I did or already. Well, I for some reason I'm not seeing them. So you know, if you wouldn't mind shouting them out, thanks. Decriminalizing marijuana as the governor of his state. Really? That would be nice. Alan. Well, my favorite thing about Tim Walls was his honesty. Okay. Yes. Alan said he sounds like Gene Hackman. <laughs> Mind your own damn business. Okay. Got two on that. Yeah. Got one more here from somebody? His Joe. Daughter, his daughter's a social worker. His daughter's so, a social worker. Oh, yeah. He talks about IVF and how that's how he had his kids. Yeah. Okay. He did veteran respect veterans. Uh, okay. Veteran respect veterans. Okay. Great. Okay. Well, that was fun. No trouble coming up with some ideas on that one. Thanks to Kira for the suggestion for the question. <laughs> okay so i guess what we should just say is that last since last time we met things have changed quite a bit quite a bit uh -oh. i know we're all sad that this happened to joe because he did such a great job and is doing such a great job but we can see clearly the wisdom of what's happened and it's just it's great the thing I fear is that this looks so great and people are so happy about Kamala that they're just going to say, oh, it's fine. We're going to win. Hmm. That is not even a little true. We need everybody on board, just like we did in 2020, to push that guy out of there. We need a mobilization of all Benzie Dems and all of our friends. We really, really, really need to do that. It's so important. God, it's so important. So with that in mind, um, there is a phone bank here on Wednesday from 5 till 8 p.m. Uh, if you're online, you can sign up for it uh, with the uh, link that's uh, on the chat. 
uh, or uh, you can tell us here that you're, you're coming. There'll be maybe a list going around, or you can just show up. It's uh, Wednesday. Uh, there's no class necessary. You need a computer and a phone. There will be instructions that day. Uh, so if you get here at five o'clock, we'll show you how to do it. It's actually kind of fun. It's this dialer thing. So you're not dialing a lot of numbers where, you know, you wait and it rings six times and then, you know, and you can't leave a message. And It's not like that at all. You're there and a, a voice shows up and you talk to them. It's very, very efficient. And people actually like it. My brother, who really doesn't like this stuff, loves doing the dialer. He has a good time with it. And you might too. So this that's this Wednesday at 5 until 8 p.m. We are also doing canvassing door to door. And uh, Mike Ross is uh, handling that. And we will be going into very full scale Kamala uh, canvassing very soon. We're waiting for one more person to show up here at headquarters who's going to help organize that. I'll tell you a little bit more about that in just a minute. Um, let's see, we do have Paris, um, uh, uh, wall signs here. Now we do have them. So when headquarters is open, you're welcome to come and sign out a sign. Donations are welcome. They are not necessary, but they are welcome. Okay. Um, and, uh, we are waiting for Robbie to show up. He is our organizer. Danette, who is working out of this office, is talking to all the counties in Northern Michigan. It's a crazy job. And, uh, so she's in and out of here like lightning bolts all the time. There she went. But, um, Robbie will be our organizer and he'll be working to organize a canvas, uh, this coming week. So please stay tuned for that. And I'll, I'll just say again, Oh my God, we need people to canvas. We just really have to have you to canvas. We really got to do that. That's what wins elections. We need your help. And uh, we'll send you to good addresses with good people. And you just need to help us motivate them. Okay? Okay. Great. Uh, did you have a question, Colin? Go ahead. Um, is there a prepared script when you get on the phone? I've never done this. Yes. More than one? Um Okay, uh, let, let me explain a few things. Yes, there's a script. Yes, there's a list that you call. It's not random calling. It's a vetted list. And uh, you can do it right on your computer and take the answers into your computer and it goes right into our database. And it helps us figure out who's out there and whether they're gonna vote for us or not and whether we should keep after them or not. You but yes- Right into your computer. You yes. mean you do it at home on your own computer? You, you, what, we want is for, here. what we want is for people to come here with their computer and their phone, we will get you going. And you can either do it right in here with other people. You might wanna go out to your car where there's more peace and quiet perhaps. Or if you need to, you can go home. But yeah, it's you need your phone and your computer, and we do the rest, really. We'll show you how to do it. We'll give you the script. We'll give you the list to call. And the the, the people just show up on the phone. It's called auto dialer, and it's very cool. Okay, Anything now, else? Again, you know, uh, I've got a cheapo Best Buy $150 laptop. Can I bring that in? Yeah. It'll work? If it's if it works online, that's fine. That's all you need. Yeah, it I, ain't nothing I fancy. Used it online much, but yeah, well, it ain't nothing I fancy. I think I've got duck duck going. Okay. Okay. Great. Cool. Thank you, Colin. Anything else? All right, great. Let's go along here. Um let's hear from Karen Cunningham, our county commissioner. Let's welcome her. Good morning, everyone. Um, it's been very busy with the BOC. We're going over the budget. But today, I want to just concentrate on we are finally updating, <clears throat> excuse me, our master plan. It hasn't been for the county, and it hasn't been addressed for seven years. So um, we, we have, let's see, 60-day comment period where citizens can suggest what they want on the master plan. And the master plan is online, so you can read all the details. It's quite lengthy. The topics that I have championed um, and 
suggested, but you were looking for input from you, okay? Are the counties should deal with the infrastructure to include, and this is from District 3 specifically, my district, protecting our freshwater resource by having county sewer as infrastructure. Include renewable resources in the master plan. At least have it mentioned in there. I'm on a multi-county committee for the state environment regulatory, and that is one of the things that they suggest we include. So far, it's crickets when I mentioned that, and I've brought it forward a number of times. I mean, I, others have probably heard me bring that forward. Uh, so include renewable resources in the master plan. Planning and zoning should be under the big picture county status. We have it really divided up in townships and we have things like uh, Sunkist and that sort of thing happen when people don't communicate or respond. So I am suggesting that. I'm getting a lot of pushback on that. Um, it would be the townships I'm proposing and have said that the township could have a committee that advises and then the county oversees it. So just an idea. And the last thing, and I've already reached out to the um, authorities that could maybe address this one, is have civic literacy, education, so people understand the government and what it does. So I've reached out on that, but please, it's open. Um, I have on my report just XXX for the link. I would send your comments to Katie Zeitz, who is the county administrator, because I still haven't gotten an answer back as to a direct link or to send it to. As soon as I do, I'll send it to our Dems, the execs here, so they can get it out to you. But other than that, oh, John Roth was here the other day at the library. He is our representative, so it's always good to meet him if you can. Um, I let my approach is I I text John Roth or whoever I'm talking to and say, I'm going to be there. I'm going to ask questions on so they can be best prepared and thorough with their answers. My questions this time were specifically on kinship. We got a lot of money from the feds that came in as foster care. Anyways, and then the second one was water quality, sewer, and septic. As you know, that we do not have that covered. But anyways, it was very good. The people that showed up, seven people showed up. Three of them were new, out of state, registered, Democrat voters. So there we go. <laughs> thank you, Karen, very much. And thanks again for all your great work. You've been a great commissioner. You've really, really worked to, to bring the community into the process and to let the community know what's going on and to speak for the community there. You're doing a great job. Thank you. Really, really, really. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, hyper five. I don't think these do much anyway. Oh, they do. Um, I just want to ask Karen. Oh, okay, okay. Um, civic literacy, is that something that you conceive of being handled through the school system or otherwise or both? I would, thank you. I would say yes to the school system and I have reached out to the superintendents. Amy Erforth and Benzie has been very responsive and back to me. But I also mention it often for those who tune in or, or come to the BOC meetings. You know, I say we need to educate the public on this, whether it's millages or whatever. So I keep bringing it. I'm sowing seeds, folks, sowing seeds. So I just think that's a brilliant idea. At and a I don't, variety of you know, I, levels. I would like to see 
it addressed in multiple ways, you know. This is what I wrote down as my notes for giving. The county should actively support and partner to participate in civic literacy by involving residents by broadcasting meetings. District 3 is the only district that broadcast meetings independently. None of the other ones do. And that's been through discussion and getting them to do that. By educating through the school systems and the county, this will build citizen empathy, appreciation, and esprit de corps. I have presented this several times, um, government for tomorrow with this Liam Dreyer to the school systems and such. Uh, Karen? Karen, Steve Thompson on Zoom, just real briefly, could you address uh, and make people aware that uh, Gary Sawyer and the other five Republican commissioners uh, don't like the idea of uh, like the uh, uh, Grand Traverse Land Conservancy buying up land in Alberta to conserve it. Um, I, I think everybody should be aware of what, what these six county commissioners are trying to pull here in Benzie County to keep us from keeping our lands from being changed drastically uh, for corporation reasons. Yeah. Thank you for that, Steve. Very quick. You got a question? Uh, I assume the civics. Am I on here? Yes. You okay. Are. Is the civics program going to conduct uh, or cover election? The fact that we run good, solid, safe elections. And what's up with the state or countywide uh, parks director? Oh, <laughs> The Parks director is a, a long conversation as far as, uh, so I, I can talk to you about that a little bit more because it would take a while. Um, and, then, and then your civics, when you're talking about that, elections on that. Um, actually, our library, the Benzie Library, is putting together a little forum that's going to be a matter of hours or several evenings that is all about that. And I've been asked to be on that committee and serve. Great. And Mary has a question online, and this is the last question. Unmute, Mary. Unmute, Unmute please. Sorry. Um, this is a statement more. Karen and I have talked about this before, but it's very important that adults are educated on civic lead, uh, literacy. Many adults have no clue how anything works, and that includes in our party. And so it's something that after we win the White House, we have to be the little engine that could that win. And after we win, it'd be great in this down year that we participate in creating some classes on how does it work? What, how do you, what does the township do? How do you, you know, and I, because it's, it's not just something that they need to get when they're in sixth grade. We need it now. Correct. Thank you, Mary. Yeah, okay, we're going to work. These, these microphones are not amplifying sound in the room. They're so the folks can hear on Zoom. That's why yeah, we use you're them. You're talking to Zoom when you talk here. Okay. And if you don't want them to hear you, hold it out here. That works really well. Okay, great. Cool. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, Karen. And thank you for those great questions. Um, and let's see, I'm just going to say um, we. Hope to have Mike here to talk a little bit about canvassing. He uh, hasn't made it to the meeting. I'll just tell you that I happen to know that they are going out. They're concentrating right now in Benzonia. They're going to strong and leaning Democrats who vote by mail to make sure that they got all their stuff lined up. They're checking into whether people, the, our base is well registered and ready to vote. We're, we're going to move from that to some more... Uh, candidate friendly stuff soon but uh this is what we're doing right now just just so you know and it's it's an un, it's a pleasant job actually because mostly people are happy to see you and they're very concerned and they want to vote and they want to make sure that they can vote so it's it's a good project it really is um and i'll also tell you i didn't say this before we do have signs um you do need to sign up to take one uh, there is an instruction sheet that goes with it, and it's first come, first serve. We can't reserve signs, and the only time you can get them is when we're open, and we're open 10 to 4, Monday through Friday, and we're open Saturday 1 to 4. Thank you.
Okay. We also have Kathy Albro signs. She doesn't want you to take one unless you're on a really good road because she doesn't have that many of them. And we really want you to uh, put up township signs for your candidates if you're in a township where there's a candidate. Okay. We don't want you putting up township candidate signs uh, in a township that they're not running. The, their, their funds are very limited. So we got to be really smart with our resources. Okay. So next up here, we're going to hear from Jana about election workers. Thank you. I know people are very eager to participate um, in this election, and we've been getting a lot of uh, questions and people saying, well, I want to be a challenger. I want to be a poll watcher. I have a little sheet here, it's a little handout, and it shows the difference between election challengers and, and poll watchers. And there is a huge difference. Um, you can get more information at michigan.gov vote. Um, I am a, 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 a poll worker, and I used to be an election judge in Maryland, and I work in Joyfield Township here, um, and I see, I see a great need for election for poll workers, people who are actually in the polls on the day of the election, and especially coming up in November. It is going to be humongous, um, and one of the issues is in, in Michigan, we cannot open the early voting ballots until the day of election. So for instance, in Joyfield Township, this uh, in, in the primary, we had to open and process about 120 ballots on the day of election while still serving voters that were coming into the polls to vote. You need a Republican and you need a Democrat. You need a Republican and a Democrat if there's anything going on with the tabulator. You need a Republican and a Democrat if, to help somebody vote. Um, the need for Democrats in some areas around here is huge. I would suggest if you do want to do this, um, that you contact your county clerk and sign up to be a poll worker. Um, also, too, and I know there are people in this room who can speak and, and online who can speak to, to this better than I can. Um, we're hearing some disturbing things about certifying the votes in some places. I don't know if we're going to have that issue in places here, but you might just double check with boards of canvassers. They are you, the public can watch the board of canvassers. You can. Um, yes. And Pete, good, Pete. I'm glad you stood up. Pete, uh, I mean, I'm going to turn this over to Pete because he is on the board of canvassers. Thank you for saving me, Pete. <laughs> yeah, um, after the townships have voted, uh, all the results, including the city of Frankfurt and all the jurisdictions in Benzie, <clears throat> go to the county building a couple days after the election. The board of canvassers consists of two Democrats and two Republicans and the county clerk. And we go through the results of each township with a fine tooth comb, looking for any discrepancies, any unexplained votes that we can't rectify. If necessary, we will bring in the clerk from that township. And in extreme cases, we will actually have them come in and recount all the ballots one by one. For this last primary election, uh, there was nobody observing us outside of the League of Women Voters. So we can only hope that continues, but it is open to the public. It will be the Thursday after the election, starting at 9 a.m. in the Board of Commissioners meeting up at the county building. Great. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Jana. Thank you, Pete. Pete, thank you for your service. Jana, thank you for your service. All the people that work on, on Election Day or coming up to Election Day, thank you very much. The message here is the best way to make sure that we we that everything is on the square with the vote is to have Democrats as poll workers, a lot of them in all of our townships, one. And number two, have some people observing the board of canvassers. We will stay in touch with all of you about that through constant con contact, but understand this is important. This is part of, uh, part of it because there are people out there who are trying really, really hard to steal the football. Mm -hmm. They're trying really hard. Okay, they got all kinds of plans. But if we're there, that stops it. That's all you got to do. You got to be there and then it's okay. Okay, next up, uh, very, very quickly, Peter. Yes, yes. 
Just so everybody knows, the Board of Canvassers in Benzie County, we have no ability to change any vote. Um, if there needs to be a recount, then we'll have a recount. But once we've certified the vote, it goes to the state for their certification. Yeah. Now, in the past, the last presidential election, we had people, you know, with all their wild theories about how the vote was fraudulent and da 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 da. And we told them, look, you have to file an appeal with the state. We're not in a position to change our totals. Once we've decided they're correct, that's it. Thank you, Pete. Okay, next up here, we are going to hear something about Kathy Albro's campaign from Jane Wild. Jane, here you go. Um, so, <laughs> some of you may uh, remember that Kathy Albro ran for the 104th in 2022. Um, she's running again, uh, this time as an independent. She's an excellent candidate. If you're not familiar with her, she is a doer. She gets stuff done. She's been an educator. She's been an educator of educators. She's been, you know, when she couldn't find childcare, she opened up a childcare center. She's been a small business owner, a small, uh, small farmer. Um, compared with her opponent, who is, as he says, a marina runner, because he runs a marina, and that's his background. So if you are as frustrated as I am of for the lack of representation, I envy those in the 103rd who have Betsy Kofia because she literally represents us all every single day. Well, Kathy Albro will literally represent us all. And um, it's really important. You may have seen at the primary, there was a Democrat's name uh, for the 104th to run against John Roth. That's not really a thing. Um, so we need to get the word out somehow that apparently this person just heard no one's running, so put their name down, uh, but they're not doing anything. Kathy is running, and she can do this if, okay, she can, <laughs> she can do this, yes, <laughs> with all of us, we need to help. Um, her campaign strategy is going to be a bit unique because she, you know, being an independent, you don't have the backing of, a, you know, the party like in, in a normal, in a regular way. I'm not going to give away all of our secrets on YouTube, but we really, really, really need a lot of people. I've got like specific instructions for what kind of jobs we need done. And if you're interested, please, please, please. Let me know. Um, and Jana, can you write my information um, to contact me if anybody's interested? It's um, it's going to be a unique way of campaigning. And if we all do it, we can make this happen. So Tom, you can your email address or however you want to keep the contact. Sure. J-M-M Wild. With an E. Yeah. Gmail. Um, or you can call two three one six three two. No, 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 no. Never mind. Okay. <laughs> so I've got all kinds of information. We need the, the manpower, the woman power. Imagine this: we could potentially have Kamala, Callie, Betsy, <laughs> Alyssa, and Kathy. <laughs> And maybe even more at the local level. So let's do this, please. Thank you. Thank you, Jen. <laughs> That's excellent. All right. Okay. Uh, as our uh, continuing cavalcade of amazing women continue, <laughs> um, we have... Uh, 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 Rachel Roberts is going to talk to us about something that's happening nationally that's now happening here on Wednesday night. So, Rachel, uh, you are on Zoom. Please take it away. Thank you. Thanks, Jim. Um, thanks, everybody. Hope you can all hear me. I'll keep it pretty brief, but what a fun meeting you all having so far today. Um, I'm a new resident in Benzie County, and I am happy to be... Um, calling Benzie home. I live in Benzonia. And um, when I first moved here, I got, um, I swung by the Dems office. I wanted to see what you all had going on. And like all of you, uh, we are pretty fired up to stand behind Kamala Harris and Tim Waltz as they um, seek the White House. 
And one way that we're doing this, um, and I thank the Benzie Dems so much for giving us a space, is through Wednesdays for Women Wednesdays for Kamala Harris. And this was started by Shannon Watts and Liz Manel. I don't know, Manella, and I don't know if all of you know who Shannon Watts is, but she is the founder of Moms Demand Action. And this is a national movement to mobilize women across the country to support Kamala's um, historic campaign and to get her through and over the finish um, on November 6th. So uh, we really invite you all to come out. Uh, we're actually gathering at the Dems office every Wednesday, except for this Wednesday. Um, this Wednesday, there is a phone bank, and I'm not going to steal the thunder about the phone banking. Um, and then being the DNC convention, we are not holding a national webinar on that day. So the following Wednesday, we will pick back up. We invite you all to come. We have food, we have snacks, and we have fellowship. And more importantly, we are getting fired up to make sure that Kamala Harris is in that White House. And so we we really ask you all to come. We are super excited. I want to give a shout out, shout out to Rudy Bishop, who supplied our pizza on the, our first gathering, which was two weeks ago. We had uh, around 20 um, women join for pizza and uh, inspiration. Uh, last week, we had um, some wine and some snacks, so we didn't have quite a large crowd, uh, but we really want to encourage you to come out. Not only is it fun to be together with women and to get fired up, but we get some practical tips and advice on how we can all make a difference. So thank you so much for giving us the time, Jim, and um, I look forward to inviting others to come, come out in two weeks. Thank you so much. Yep, thanks. Okay, to recap, this Wednesday, there won't be a Wednesday Women for for uh, Harris because of the convention coverage, uh, but we will be having a phone bank here that night from 5 until 8. The following Wednesday, we will be back here with Wednesday Women for Harris or at 8 o'clock. Yep. Yep. Get here at eight. Hang out. Have a good time. Men are welcome as long as you're allies of women. You have to be an ally of women to come. Yeah, but then but we, come. we we invite allies. We invite people who identify as female. We invite uh, whoever. We are an inclusive group, and we 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 really learn a lot of great stuff. We have some great speakers. Amy Klobuchar has talked to us. We had Adam Kinzinger, Kinzinger last week. Um, it's pretty great. So we encourage you all to come and join. And thanks for giving us the time and space. And together we can do this. Thank you. Okay. Hope to see some of y'all here next Wednesday. And there is a convention watch party here next Thursday when Kamala gives her speech. And again, we'll have snacks. We'll have fun stuff to drink, not just fizzy water. Just... <laughs> and um, uh, we will um, have a good time together while Kamala blows up the convention in a really, really, really great way. Chris? Two quick comments on your last two agenda items. The phone bank and uh, and the watch party. There are some ways to sign up for those online, and everything is being done by Mobilize. So uh, Jana has or will put that all in the chat. The links are there. I don't know if you said that before, no, but we do need to go to those links. That's uh, you can come here, of course. But if you want to do anything really that has to do with the um, Harris Victory campaign, and I'm speaking for our organizers now. It's all being handled through Mobilize Online, and we will continually provide you all of those links. Yeah, we'll be sending them out via constant contact. So please sign up if you can. We we really need your help. Very quickly, Colin. I have a problem with communication, mainly emails that pile up in my phone. I go in there and I look at a phone message and it says, well, we're meeting Saturday. There's no date after the Saturday we're meeting in the message. I need the message to say Saturday the 17th or whatever, because they pile up. I look at the old ones, I look at the new ones, and I get frustrated and confused what I'm looking at. Thank so you. please put the date with the Thursday, the date with the Wednesday, even when you just say it here at the meeting. Thank you very much. It's actually using the battery. Thank you, Colin, duly noted. Uh, okay. Uh, Next up here is uh, Jill. Would you please tell us about the coming up in Traverse City? 
So um, unlike the first TC March, TC Women's March, which was January 2017, when we were protesting Trump's election, we're going to be gathering before the election. Next Saturday, the 24th, at f and Park in Traverse City is a TC March for Kamala. They'll be meeting at f and Park, going through Traverse City, and then coming back to the park. Um, I'll be driving, so if anybody wants to carpool from Lake Ann or meet me in Lake Ann, that would be great. A oh, one o'clock to three o'clock. And you know, the pictures yeah. up on the wall are from the first TC Women's March. We had a lot of Benzie people there, and it'll be great to see us all there again. Thank you, Jill. Okay, I think uh, we've got through all of our uh, party announcements. I'll just note that Mike Ross... Our canvassing organizer is here, and if you want to help us canvas, that's the guy to talk to, okay? I already made the announcements on it, okay? Yeah, okay. So uh, we are now going to hear from our two uh, Supreme Court candidates. Uh, we'll start with Kimberly Thomas. She's a law professor at the U of M Law School. She runs the Juvenile Justice Clinic. She uh, and law school students represent people who can't afford lawyers, okay? That sounds like the kind of person you might want to have on the Supreme Court. Her experience representing low-income Michiganders and teaching students the ethical practice of law will help her bring a voice of integrity and knowledge to the Michigan Supreme Court. She served on the Bipartisan Michigan Task Force on Juvenile Justice Reform, which took a data-driven approach to understanding and making recommendations for improvements of our juvenile system. She's very, very devoted to having our young people not fall between the cracks and to move forward. And now she's running to be on our Supreme Court. Would you please welcome Kimberly Ann Thomas? Good morning, Benzie County. It's so great to see you. So thank you for having Justice Golden and I this morning. We are so glad to be here. And we really want to start off and just emphasize that our justice system is on the ballot this fall. Um, not, we know that you have seen state Supreme Court cases around the country that are impacting millions of people in those states, and Michigan is no exception. 95% of the cases in our courts are in our state courts. And so all of the questions regarding health care, labor, employment, in the environment, all of the things that you care about, our last stop is our state Supreme Court. And so we are so excited to be running for the Michigan Supreme Court this year. There are two separate races this year. Justice Bolden, um, because she was appointed last year, has to run for the remainder of her term. So she'll be on your ballot as a partial term and she's done an amazing job. We need to get her reelected this year to the Michigan Supreme Court. And so Justice Kyra Harris Bolden is on the partial term and got to get her reelected. So my name's Kimberly Ann Thomas. I'm running for the full open term. There's a justice who stepped down. And so Justice Bolden and I are running together as partners. She's running for her partial term and I'm running for the open seat on the court. And there's no incumbent. This is really the uh, opportunity that we're gonna have to get an open seat and increase the majority on the court for progressive justices who care about the people of our state. Um, just a little bit more about me, um, you know, uh, you mentioned that I'm a law professor at the University of Michigan, that I run our juvenile justice clinic, um, but, you know, I didn't start out as a, as a law professor or a family of lawyers. Um, my family is originally from Pennsylvania coal country, and I'm the first person in my family to go straight from high school to college. Uh, I moved to Michigan in 1994, and then in 1995, I worked at the Detroit newspapers. I was a newspaper reporter and I was a member of Local 22 when the newspaper unions went out on strike and I went out with my union. So it's an unusual background that drew me to law school. Um, I spent a year out on strike in Detroit with my union and made the decision to go to law school because I understood how much the law impacts people's lives. And so I went from the picket line to Harvard Law School and have really had a career voted devoted to making sure that the law 
takes into account the impact on real people, that we have access to our court system and that people have the respect and dignity that they deserve in our courts. And so that's why I'm running for the Michigan Supreme Court. The most important thing to remember is that this is, while we, Justice Bolden and I will be nominated by the Democratic Party, we are on the nonpartisan section of the ballot. And so we really implore you to, to spread the word to your friends and neighbors. And when you're out there canvassing or talking to voters, to make sure they understand that, that it's on the nonpartisan section of the ballot. So if someone votes straight ticket, they will not uh, vote for the Michigan Supreme Court. They will not have their voice heard on the future of our justice system. And so really that nonpartisan ballot. Um, justice Bolden, I know is here, and so I'm really excited for you to hear from her as well. But thank you so much. My name is Kimberly Ann Thomas for the Michigan Supreme Court. Kimberly, that was a, a fine presentation. Uh, are there any questions for her? I, I don't understand the part about, I didn't understand the part about it being on a nonpartisan ballot. If I, if I choose the Democratic ballot, do I miss that? Yes. How do I get so it? If, yeah, so you won't, you'll have the ballot with us on it, but if you vote straight party ticket, you will not complete the ballot. You will vote for all the partisan races, but you will not vote for the justices of the Michigan Supreme Court and any other races that are listed as nonpartisan on the ballot. And so if you are a straight party ticket voter, go for it, go vote your straight party ticket, but then look down at either the bottom or the back for the Michigan Supreme Court and fill in Justice Kyra Harris Bolden and Kimberly Ann Thomas so that your voice is also heard in the Michigan Supreme Court race. Thank you. Okay, you need a, need a microphone. Thank you. Uh, there is a statewide uh, consideration of squatters moving into okay. someone's squatters, the problem of squatters moving into housing that seems to be vacant. And if they pay taxes or the water bill, the the owner of the house has no rights to get them out. We have a big case pending here in uh, Benzie County this next week. Uh, where they're going to talk about this. I was wondering uh, if you have anything to say about that. So because um, both Justice Bolden and I are bound by um, the judicial canons and because cases like that, if there's a really big case in your county that might end up in front of the court, we can't weigh in on that because we would want to wait until that case came to the court and hear the pleadings. Um, so I can't speak specifically to that. I appreciate you highlighting something that is in your local court system that um, matters to you. I think it's the reason why we want people to be focused on the state Supreme Court race, because we know that, you know, these issues are really important. And, you know, to think about what, who you want, you know, if those end up in the Michigan Supreme Court, who you want making the decisions on those. Any other questions for uh, Kimberly Thomas? None in the chat. Okay. Um, is Justice Bolden here? Great. Well, let's just charge right on ahead then. And uh, I'll just tell you all that uh, Justice Kyra Harris Bolden was appointed to the Supreme Court uh, on the January 1st of 23 by our governor. She's the first black woman to serve on the, as a Michigan justice. She's a graduate of Southfield's public school system. Go Southfield. And she got her bachelor's from Grand Valley State and her law degree from UD Mercy. She was elected to the Michigan House in 2019 and served two terms. She sat on the Judiciary Committee where she worked on criminal justice reform, just like our other candidate, and on legislation to protect survivors of sexual violence. Justice Bolden passed quite a few pieces of critical bipartisan legislation into law and kind of set a record for that uh, in her freshman year as a representative. So she's very effective. And I'm sh sure that's one reason uh, our dear governor spotted and appointed her. Um, while on the state bar, Justice Bolden practiced as a criminal defense attorney, attorney 
then as a judicial law clerk in Wayne County's Third Circuit Court. Uh, she was a civil litigator for Lewis and Monday PC, which is a giant and very important firm in the Detroit area, and in several practice areas before joining the Michigan legislature. Um, I might hear, I was going to ask the justice about this. I know she has a one young child that kind of uh, arrived as she was running for office last time. Uh, so we're wondering how she's doing. But I'll just add that uh, Justice Bolden is a member of several bar associations and also the National Congress of Black Women, Oakland County, and the Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority. So she gets around. She's not just a legislator or a lawyer. She works in the community in a lot of, lot of different ways. And she was a 2020 Michigan Chronicle uh, 40 Under 40 awardee. All right. So she's moving right along, and we're great to have her on the Supreme Court, and we're great to have her here today. So let's welcome Justice Kyra harris Bolden. Hi, everyone. Are you able to hear me okay? Can you hear me? Okay, great. Um, so you're asking about my child. So I ran for Michigan Supreme Court in 2022 when I was pregnant, and my daughter's birthday uh, it was actually a couple days ago. So I am out uh, with uh, baby Emerson and I have to, you know, walk her about. <laughs> and can you say hi? Say hi, baby. Okay. <laughs> so we're walking, we're walking for her birthday. Um, so thank you so much for having me. Um, and that was a wonderful introduction. And now I really don't know what to say. Um, no, you may... <laughs> You may remember me running for Michigan Supreme Court in 2022, where I was pregnant, and I accepted the uh, Democratic Party's nomination for Michigan Supreme Court six days after I gave birth to my little one. Um, but then I ended up losing the election by two percentage points, two percentage points, folks. And what I learned was that, which was actually brought up on the call, was so many people thought that I was captured with straight ticket voting. And... We have to make sure that we um, are voting in the nonpartisan section of the ballot. It's just one ballot. You can, I'm telling people to go to the nonpartisan section first, find that, bubble in Bolden and Thomas, and then hit straight ticket and complete your ballot. Um, because there was a 1 million vote drop off between the governor and the nonpartisan section of the ballot in 2022, folks. One million vote drop off. I lost by 200,000 votes across the state of Michigan. Now, if we would have just captured, you know, 2%, <laughs> I would have won. Um, and the governor could have appointed someone else, um, potentially uh, Professor Thomas to that seat, and we would be in a lot better position. However, we have the opportunity to protect justice for generations to come this year. We can end this year with a uh, we can end this year potentially with a 5-2 majority on the Michigan Supreme Court. What a wonderful opportunity that would be. And folks, these, these terms that justices have are long. So if Kim wins, which we're hoping, and I do think she will win, she will have eight years. But that just means we don't want someone else in her position, right? Eight years is an incredibly long time to be making the most critical and crucial decisions for Michiganders. Just for perspective, this year alone, we issued 30 majority opinions. Imagine 30 majority opinions for the next eight years, how that can transform the Michigan that we live in. And so sitting on the court for the last year and a half has been absolutely eye-opening. I'm so proud of the decisions that we have made but we're at a slim 4-3 majority with me being up. So we need to make sure that we retain my seat and that I um, that you vote for my partner, Kimberly Ann Thomas, to protect justice for generations to come. We can do it. We just need people to complete the ballot, to vote in the nonpartisan section, to bubble in Bolden and Thomas. Thank you so much. I'm happy to answer any questions you have. Okay, any questions? I guess uh, we've answered them all. Barry's got a question. All right, we'll wait for the microphone, Barry, so that Zoom can hear you. Go ahead. Thank you for being here. 
Um, I don't know if this is terribly relevant inside Michigan, but I thought you could speak to it. How much should we be concerned and what can we do to make sure the voter certification system works properly, especially in close races? Um, so we do not handle policy or process. Uh, we only handle if a case comes before the court in ruling for, um, you know, what, what the law prescribes. But I can say that it's so important to make sure you have elected officials up and down the ballot. Uh, and, and I will say this, too. The judiciary is an equal third branch of government, right? We have the power to deem a statute to be unconstitutional. We have the power of interpretation. And so while we cannot you know, necessarily protect or advocate certain things, we are the last line of defense. We are the last line of defense. When we make a decision, um, that, that's, that's it. Only 5% of our um, cases are appealed to the federal court system. And so what I will say, the best uh, answer to your question is vote the entire ballot. Make sure you have people that are interested in protecting democracy and make sure that you have justices on your Michigan Supreme Court that are interested in protecting uh, the integrity. How, how you doing? <laughs> um, that are protecting the integrity of our courts and making sure they're adhering to the rule of law. Um, I can tell you that some of uh, my opponents and Kimberly Ann Thomas's opponents um, some of them don't, some of them believe that the 2020 election was stolen and they have been um, open about that. And so again, the best way to move forward with any of the issues or questions that you may have is to really vote for people that want to uphold integrity, fairness, and equality uh, in our state. Mm Wait, wait, one, wait, one, wait one second, Ruka. We've got a question. We've got a couple comments from Zoom. So thank you, Justice Bolden, for this. Um, one of the comments we got is from Michael Hertz, who I think speaks for a lot of us in this room and on Zoom, uh, who wants to commend you for your recent decision or decisions repealing some of the most restrictive anti-abortion regulations that Michigan had. So. No, we are doing great work on the Michigan Supreme Court, making really good decisions, not only for the people of uh, today, but for the people of tomorrow, uh, like my daughter, like your children, like your grandchildren. That's how long these decisions last. Um, I will tell you that we are reviewing cases from the late 1800s, early 1900s as precedent every day. And so the decisions made last literally generations. And so I appreciate that. And we're gonna continue to work very hard and please make sure uh, we retain my seat and get uh, my partner, Kimberly Ann Thomas on the court uh, so we can continue the great work that we're doing. Great, and we do have a question in the room, Rick. Yeah, yeah a quick question. I, I'm trying to understand this nonpartisan piece to the ballot. Um, are Republicans in that section as well? Um, so, so would their names appear in that section? So the way that it's so all judicial races are nonpartisan. Um, the Michigan Supreme Court has the uh, lovely <laughs> uh, opportunity to be uh, selected or nominated by the major parties. And so whoever or so the Michigan Democratic Party will nominate myself and Kimberly Ann Thomas on August 24th. The Republican Party will also nominate on August 24th someone to run against me and someone for the eight year seat that Kimberly Ann Thomas is running for. However, we will all appear in the nonpartisan section of the ballot. We will not have a party designation. We will not be captured by straight ticket voting. And again, this is an important, crucial piece because this is how we lose elections. Um, so I, we really need you to tell your friends, families, and neighbors um, to vote in the nonpartisan section first. We don't know where it will be on your ballot, but it will say, there will be a break in your ballot that says nonpartisan. And then the first race under nonpartisan will be Michigan Supreme Court. You have to bubble us in specifically. We are not captured by straight ticket, uh, but we are on the same. It's all one ballot. So you can hit straight ticket. I think you should go to the nonpartisan section first, uh, but it will the, the straight ticket will capture all the partisan races. But then you have to go to the nonpartisan section and bubble in all of those individuals specifically. So all of your judicial candidates will be in the nonpartisan section, including 
myself and Kimberly Ann Thomas. Great. So, Thanks so, for clarifying. So everybody make yourself a note, you know, write it down mm -hmm. or something like that. Bubble in Kimberly Thomas and Justice Kyra Bolden first and then vote the rest of your ballot. So absolutely. <laughs> are there any other Democratic? Are there any other Democratic nonpartisan voters or, or candidates on that ballot that we should be aware of? I'm not sure about your specific county, but like I said, all of the judicial candidates um, are on the nonpartisan section. So if there is somebody running for circuit court judge or your district court judge, they will be on your nonpartisan section. So you really want to, you, I think you would know because usually they would come to your meeting if they're a judge, but just make sure that those people are bubbled in separately. Um, but you know, your city council races, your school board members, right? Um, they may run as Republicans or Democrats, but they're nonpartisan on your ballot. So we just fall into that similar category. Great. Um, and I should add, I think this will reassure all of you who are puzzled about this. We will have a slate out for everybody, and that will explain it. It'll break down. Here's our the national, here are the uh, state, and here are the local, all partisan, left and right, uh, re uh, Democrat and Republican, down the, and then under that, it'll say nonpartisan. It'll be all these judges uh, from Supremes uh, to, as the justice said, all the way down to like district court. Those will all be there and uh, school board and all that that are nonpartisan. So you have to go through the whole ballot. You have to do that. And you have to, in your mind, know the names of the people that are Democrats that aren't designated as such. So you got to memorize the name Kyra Bolden. you got to memorize the name. You, you can take the slate in when you vote. Uh, I was just, I was just reminded of that. Or you can write it on your hand like Colin does. Okay. But uh, yeah, you can take the notes in and, and use those to do that. And we urge you to do that because it is complicated. It's a huge ballot this year. It's just gigantic. And uh, so you need these slates. So we'll be passing them out. And I think when you look at the slate, it will become more clear to you. Okay. And, and at least we made it easy for you. So nonpartisan section, Kim and Kyra. That's it. Just remember Kim and Kyra. <laughs> yeah, that's, that is easy, actually. <laughs> that's, I didn't think of that. Okay, that's terrific. Okay, uh, any other questions for the justice? Well, thank you so much, and happy birthday. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. Okay, so I guess that's it. Um, and we're going. We're, oh, we're going to listen to a recessional now, and I, I think you're going to like this. Uh, but before we roll that, I'll just say here in the room, there's still some really great food out there. That egg dish is fabulous. The baked goods are really good. The coffee is still delicious. So please load up on this stuff so we don't have to take it home. Okay. There's great food here. Thanks to the uh, folks who brought in the food. We really appreciate it. And Jane has Kathy Albro sign up that she's walking around. And Kira, what you got? Nothing? Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. So thank you all for, for coming. We need you to canvas. We need you to find. We need you to come to the convention uh, watch party. We need you. We need you. We need you. Please help us out. Thank you and have a good Saturday. Yeah, my husband is a poor for all there and for no. You need audio on the power DVD.
Get no. Fui. <clears throat> we missed this the last time too. Yeah, get it. For some reason, we're not getting the audio on Zoom. I know, and this has happened before, and I've reported it before. Darn. I love the music. I know. I love Keb Mo. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Susie. Hi, Stevie. I've tuned in late. I was trying to get there in person, but I don't know. The old bones didn't move fast enough. <laughs> <laughs> Everything good with you? Everything's good with me, yes. Getting ready for uh, Labor Day Pond Jam. Uh, oh, that's right. Up at Archie's. Got some good good acts coming. And uh, yeah. Sorry, everybody on Zoom. I don't think we're going to have the song. I apologize. Worked great yesterday. <laughs> Sing it to yourself. It's a wonderful song. <laughs> have a great day. Sorry. Bye, What's everybody. The, what was the name of the song? <laughs> Put a woman in charge. Oh, I've got yay. It. Good choice. <laughs> I've already. I've we can already go to YouTube. And listen. Sorry, we'll try to get it for next time. <gasps> Thank you. Thanks. That is, a, that is an excellent song. I've already got that on my Facebook wall. Yeah. <laughs>